wrestling fans around the corner around the world. I'm Dan Marotti. MJ in the house. It's unbelievable, fans. It's a Big little chilly outside. Them. Valentine's Day is coming up this weekend. A if you want to warm your heart, stand by. Our brand <laughs> new wrestling inside is Party with Marty is next. Wrestling fans, this weekend, get ready for not one but two live episodes of Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday, February the 19th during SmackDown, we'll be joined by Marty Gennetti of the Rockers for fun and a cyber autograph signing. Then, this Sunday, February the 21st, Marty will be back L-I-V-E live during our Elimination Chamber pay-per-view watch-along. Watch the big events with friends, interact with a future Hall of Famer, and help us keep wrestling legends working. Set a reminder on YouTube for these special episodes now. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore, and we need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey Through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. All right, wrestling fans, welcome to another episode of Wrestling Inside. It's Potty with Marty. As we roll through this with Marty. MJ's cold, barbershop. cold winter, hopefully we're keeping you warm on Thursday nights, whether you're having an adult beverage or maybe curled up under a blanket, like our good friend out in Pittsburgh. Or some Fabo. Or some Fabo pop. Fabo. Why do I keep saying Fabo? I don't know. What's Fabo? It's pretty All good, though. I'm drinking friends, something else. I'm sure they're tuning in on the live premiere. Maria Davis, Tina, Slick Rick B, all of the Kevins, T Vaughn. Tania. The one you Sometimes couldn't. it's Tania. You know, I she has to several her aliases. I, does she? She's a, uh, the woman of mystery. Tania, be careful. Man. Also you got known me nervous. As, I just did a cameo for her. Sometimes and I had to get, known as Smokey. Are you sure? Yeah, and That's sometimes known. And I accidentally called her Stoney for a while. <laughs> because you know what? There's a lot of folks to try and remember, but, you know, as we mentioned, Marty, we're going to be trying to set up a, a way for fans to have, instead of those cameo videos on a cell phone... Tell them about Paramount. Patreon. Patreon. We'll get there in a second, oh, okay. but when you, next time you're here in studio, we want to have it set up where you can do live video greetings here in studio, where fans will yeah, get a really so nice, fun. nice high, instead of a, something shot with a cell phone, a high-quality video with you. But you know the only Because you're all about quality. Well, where's my phone? Oh, it's only the charger again every same, time, every week. The same place you left it last time. <laughs> last, last about 10 episodes ago. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, let's party with Marty as we remember the year. You ever had a Bluetooth? 1989. I don't even know what they do. What, Bluetooth? I've never had one. I got one, but it's because I, I got my tooth well, knocked out. you got out. a white tooth, yeah. Uh, and I had to, I had a piece of paper that had blue lines in it, and it's got the whole tooth blue. Which, oh, they were over there. All right, well, don't, uh, don't, yeah, don't freeze frame that and put it all over the damn shit. Yeah, 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 just pretty much told them what to do with it. Uh, all right, wrestling fans, March 18th, Saturday, March the 18th, 1989, a kind of nondescript day, nothing huge. Well, did we just go up to 1999? What did we do a while ago? 
or well, I'll say a while ago well, we last keep, week. We, we're trying to get through 1989. We're we, we like to jump around. <laughs> uh, just to show how hot the industry was in 89, March 18th, you're working the A-team. You're underneath Hogan and Bossman. Double shot in the afternoon. You had a matinee at MSG. Hogan and Bossman in the cage. Rockers in the Brain Busters. Is that what do you call it, matinee? Did they Ma it was in the afternoon, yep. 20,000 people sold out. That night, this guy right here, uh -oh. was lucky enough to see you guys I, in the same Hogan and Boss Man cage match in Boston, sold out 16,000 in the garden. The garden. 36,000 people you guys did in one day. Yeah. How uh, hot was the house show business at that point in 89? And the Spectrum, an hour down the other way from the garden, about an hour and a half, I guess. That would always be sold out yeah. during those things. I mean, there was three venues right there that bam, 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 sell out, sell out, sell out. But, I mean, all the places sold out, but you're talking about the biggest run ones in the country. You know, there's 16,000, 20,000 plus, I think. They re, well, they redid it and added more yeah. seats. It was very rare for both for the, for, for, to run Boston and New York in the same day. It only yeah, happened a yeah, couple of times. A, because we had to, we drove, you know, Trump had an airline back then. Remember yeah. Trump yeah, Airlines? Yeah. It, it went to Washington, D.C., I think, Boston. It only went to like four or five places. Mm -hmm. But there was that much commute. So would you fly or did you drive? Sometimes we, when we do the On doubles, a day like that, when you had a matinee in New York, would you drive well, to Boston or would you fly? I think we flew because... Oh, really? It was, what, a three-hour, three-and-a-half, four-hour oh, drive? Yeah, during the day, that time of day, before I would drive. Four-hour drive, yeah, from Boston to New York. And we had to do that a handful of times. 36,000 people in one day. Well, yeah, when we did this, um, my biggest show was actually at WrestleMania 3. I think they had 90 through 90 93,000 at WrestleMania 93, 3. And uh, at the Pontiac uh, Silverdome, which they tore that down recently. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's nothing now. Uh, it's sad. My girl For Wendy. historical purposes, I wish someone did something with it, but. Yeah, I know, right? And people up there felt the same way. My, my illegitimate uh, mother of my daughter, illegitimate daughter, um, uh, she, she sent me a picture of them just, you know, tearing it down. Wendy, she was, uh, you know about Wendy. Wendy? Wendy. No. What do they call that? The baby mama? <laughs> His baby mama. Um, yeah, she, uh, we, we, we're good friends. We stayed friends shit, since 1988. <laughs> so however many years ago that was. It's like 30, 32. Yeah. 32. Uh, that's a long friendship. Uh, but she uh, she sent me pictures. If that was 93, that was my biggest. And But you know what's so different? But you didn't work WrestleMania 3. No, I was, there, I was there for a dark match or some shit. And, no, and, and you were in AWA. No, we You had, didn't come in to get fired from WWF <laughs> until... <laughs> no, that was, was... May and June of 87. Of 87, yeah. Yeah. What year? That was 86, though. When it was uh, Sean and I went to it. Maybe on call or, you know, come meet kind of thing. You were actually at WrestleMania 3? Yeah, what yeah, the yeah. hell were you doing there, working for another company? No, well, we didn't wrestle. Well, because you... You were just I, saying hi to the boys? No, or? we got an invite. Um, oh. But um, you, I don't remember the contracts back then. Now they're, well, since 1990, for sh maybe, maybe even later than that, 96-ish on up, there was a, uh, not to no compete, but... Other companies couldn't approach you while you were under contract. And I think they have that in other sports, too. You oh, sure, be, sure. You, I don't know what they that call it. They call it tampering, yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, that, I don't think we had that until later in the mid-'90s. I don't think it was at first. So you were, a, even though you wrestled for AWA, you were a welcome guest at WrestleMania yeah. 3. Well, what you got to remember, Terry Garvin was in there, yeah. and he would, why you do, why you say that? <laughs> <laughs> the captain of the cream team, baby. Oh, damn, man, come on. <laughs> So you were an invited guest. What was your impression of you and Sean showing up? You know, as AWA, it, it wasn't dead at that point, but it certainly wasn't on fire. No, it, dro it dropped a lot. What did you think of 93,000 people but, at that dome? I'm going to tell you, I'm gonna tell you okay. what's different about it. Well, for, well, our impression was, like, fuck, we're, we're McNichols Arena, which was in Denver, yep. our, our favorite place. You um, love Denver. Yeah. Uh, it, would, it would be, it was the last one that would stay half full, which meant, like, 8,000 people or something. And now we go into this place, like we're invited to come down, and it was actually a, we're, we're gonna get talked to, but the TV, like like that, pay-per-views, Vince say so busy, you ain't, oh, you ain't, yeah. you ain't Wrestle, get, the day you of go, this is what you're gonna see, he went that way, he went this way, he went under, he went up, he went over, uh, <laughs> that's all you're gonna see of him. 
but it was still nice to be over and, and see the production. And, well, actually, it was all, when we came in, it was all set up. And, um, yeah, I mean, they, they wasn't doing the repelling from the roof shit. And, you know, like I said, all the big guys, we just kind of seen the show. To see that many people, that's a Pontiac Silverdome. Now, did you, did you watch it from the back? Did you try and Pretty sneak out back. into the crowd? Mm, or? No. No. No, we, we were nervous wrecks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can remember, imagine. We, we, yeah, we're rookies. Yeah. We're rookies. You young guys. Yeah. And um, I think when it goes in your hair. No, oh, here we go. Oh, dear God. Well, that was. But just put it in the ball is all we ask, I guess. Yeah, we don't want nobody to trip over that. No. I got gray hair. Can y'all see gray hair? That looks blonde to me. I don't know. It does look blonde, don't it? All right, well. Um, it ain't in my ear no more. Um, but, but, but then the first time we was actually on the show was, uh, this, what did they call that? Not the Sky Dome. Toronto, what's that called? Sky Dome? The Toronto Sky Dome Sky was Dome. WrestleMania 6. Yeah, yeah. Six, six, <clears throat> 60 something thousand. It was a record indoor. Uh, for Toronto, yeah. For Toronto, for the Sky Dome, yeah. And, but it's just like when we was at the Pontiac Silver Dome and watching, I mean, it's, it's like you're watching a football field away. You know, the ring is actually small to people from where we were. Um, but when, when and in Toronto, we're in the ring, you know, and we're looking out at people. It's just different because of the roar. Like when you do a spot and wham, you end up with a, the big slam or something, and it, ah, it's right on you. In, in a big open uh, spot like that, like the uh, Sky Dome. It's like a delayed reaction. Yeah, it's like, yeah. it comes on like, oof. You know, it's, it slowly comes to you. So you almost got to time your shit different, you know, because when you get that big pop, you time it before you go, which the guys need to learn that today. Especially in the, in the, I was going to say welterweights. The, what do they call them? Cruiserweights. Cruiserweights. Because they're bam, 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 bam. You know, 38 great spots. Each one of them was a great spot, but you go right into another one and never you cheat yourself. You're not you, pacing yourself. Yeah, you don't, you don't let the, the crowd see you. You just do a double flip and just splash the guy. And instead of giving them the, holy shit, did you see that? You pick them up and go into something else so the eyes have to follow the action. You know, they can't even think about what they saw. So that, that move was brilliant, good, uh, unbelievable, won't even be remembered. <laughs> you know, you just wasted it. You cheated yourself because you did such a good move, and you cheated the fans. You didn't let them have it because they got to keep up. Now you're throwing them in, you go arm drag them after you just did a double flap, <laughs> a double flip. But anyway, you time your, your, your match by that. You know, when you do the big bam, and you get that pop, you, you let it soak in before you go into the next move. But when you get that delayed, wah, it's now, like, well, we got to wait a minute. <laughs> it's like dead air, and you never want dead air on TV. You know that from, from this. At WrestleMania three, did you get a chance to sample the goods? We had many of the stars here that appeared on the show, and they said there were uh, lines of cocaine waiting for them as they got ready to go uh, there's on. Some certain did, you, did you sample the goods at WrestleMania three? I um. As I know, far as the cocaine part? Yeah. You know, one time... It was somebody, free. Yeah, I was going to tell you. Somebody told me... I hate this shit going inside my ear. Yeah. Um, I think we need to get you over to Noel Salon, 347 Pleasant Street, that's your, downtown your Mall of Mass. Huh? Yeah, well, you form a place. So you know how to cut hair? Oh, no. No, 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 no. I did the books. I did the payroll. I did the bookings. Did I you did... do the hirings and the firings? No. No, because <laughs> you might have gotten in trouble. Uh oh. Well, I, uh, I, I, you know what? I can't. That's one thing I can't do because I love each one of those people in different ways. They were good human beings. They all this still good human beings. Was that lightning thunder? You heard that? No, that was just him rolling in the chair. Did you fall? No. Uh, just, forget, forget, even... forget about him. Forget about him. Oh so yes. Did, did you get free blow at WrestleMania three? I'll tell you one thing that I'm not going to tell you. All right. Um, back in the day, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I probably shouldn't. Okay, well, I heard. It wasn't first thing. I could, we're going lights out. We had lights out because <laughs> Moody visited us that one time, remember? Yeah. Um, that the last pay-per-view. SummerSlam. Yeah, we had to do it from a hotel room. Yeah, <laughs> that was a disaster, but we made it work. The one we just did in Survivor went real well. We, we, that was fantastic. Did we do the Rumble? I'm not 100% sure yet. I'll have to check the video <laughs> archives. You know, it, it, sometimes it gets complicated. It's not really that complicated. I'm just stupid. But when you're taping so far ahead, 
<laughs> and you're like, well, this is coming up. No, it ain't. <laughs> we did that. <laughs> We're but, taping this episode on Survivor Series Sunday for yeah. the fans at home. But uh, so, and we're into February. Right. So back to what you were going to say. Oh, some of the best cocaine that I never did was with Vince McMahon. Really? You, you didn't hear me, did you? No. Some of the best either. cocaine I never did. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's not a secret. Vince was known in his oh, time. Oh, yeah. He liked, he was, uh, but I said never did. <laughs> so that yeah, way, never, I didn't say it. You never said it. I heard. <laughs> Many in, the, in your seat have said the same thing. Vince, in, in his day, he liked the, the, he liked he the party, medicine. You know, you know, he was one, one, He wanted to be one of the boys. One time, and I've told this on one of the episodes previously, you know, Sean used to be a little bit, a little bit, just a little, and he had this little funny. cocky and arrogant, you know. Oh, wow. And uh, the PT's was the name of a strip club there in San Antonio. <clears throat> and uh, I think I've told this, you might remember. Um, Vince, you know, we all went to the, to the club after it was a TV taping. And this club, PT, the strip club, um, they catered to us. You know, like drinks, food, you know. The, the girls were all like, oh, they got money, let's go over there. I mean, you know, it was like shooting fish in a barrel. You ain't going to miss. <laughs> but but um, that was horrible, wasn't it? I actually got a, a girlfriend for like, I think I've seen her almost every time I went to San Antonio for. Did you? For almost. For a couple, maybe a couple years. Oh, Tara. Then she got into, she went from stripping, she went into Penthouse magazine. Wow. Then got a bunch of them, and then she went to Hollywood and did good. And she, you know, people change. Stardom changes people. It does. Well, sometimes. Most well, of the time. You know, when Macho told me the best line I'd ever heard, but it's not a line, but it's the truth. I found it, because I was saying how Sean was changing. And I said, man, just, you know, this getting famous part is changing Sean. He's not who he used to be. No, brother. It's not changing him at all. It's making him comfortable to be who he really is. <laughs> and I, th you know, I thought about it, like, that makes sense. And then I've seen it, you know, with the years go by. I've watched somebody come in, well, quiet and timid, and, you know, guy, and, and then you give them a little stardom. That's why Vince, very smart, tests you when you first come in. And, and, a and lot you of people, should. Yeah, yeah. And, and you run an organization, so you yeah. know, you know. You test them when they first come in because if they start getting b bitchy, why should I lose to him? Right. Or why should, what are they going to do when they get up there to Steve Austin? It's Austin's even going to be worse. You know, what you going to do now? <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so Vince. Uh, so with the, let's talk, you mentioned P Potty Vince in San Antonio. P P yeah, PT's the place and, and uh, all the boys are coming in. And everybody was in there. It was packed. They, that's why they catered to us because they knew when the people around town knew that we was in town, we're going you to PTs. It's going to so, be a busy you know, night. Yep. We drew for them. <laughs> and uh, so after it was a TV taping, you know, just a long ass day. It's like five hours. You got to be there taping. Um, as the guys would finish, shower up, clean up, do whatever they do. Some would grab a meal first, but you know, PTs they're going to feed us there. But um, They'd come in the door, the way the door would open, it was like a, a street light, you know, thing. And you'd open the door, it was like you see the silhouette, but you could see the person enough. And like, oh, it's Taker, or it's this guy, or it's Warlord. And uh, you'd hear the whole club, like, nudging. He's like, it's Warlord, it's Warlord. Oh, it's Davy Boy. Oh, it's Kurt Henning, it's Mr. Perfect. You know, that kind of thing. Well, Sean didn't, I was already in there. I was sitting around with, I don't even remember who, Kurt Hennig and Davy Boy and Jimmy Powers, you know, all the, all the pranksters in the clan, the place. I, I think. I don't remember if Owen's around him, but I was always with Owen. And Owen was one of the biggest pranksters around. Oh, yeah. And uh, God bless, you know, rest his soul. And bless it. Um, but so Sean comes in, you know, after whatever he, because he lived, he was living there yeah. at the time. So I guess he went by home first, then he came over. And uh, he opens the door, and everybody, everything gets quiet, you know, because everybody's looking like, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? And he sees that. He's walking in. All the girls are even dancing. They're stopping and looking. And he's looking around, and he goes, he thinks it's just him, right? He don't know they did that for everybody to come through. Don't make them like this anymore, do they, girls? And everybody was like, ah. Oh. No, is this your Sean? <laughs> what? The Sean? Yeah, Sean. Okay. Yeah, don't make them like this anymore, do they, girls? Yeah, it was just a, 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 a complete letdown. No place like, oh. <laughs> But Vince was there. Pat Patterson was there. Pat Patterson yeah. was there. Yeah. What was he doing? Uh, Open to uh, partying. <laughs> but um, Vince 
this is why he stopped going out with the boys, from what I understand. I was there for this. They, um, you know, he partied. He, he, yeah. you know, he drank a little. Medicine man. He's Medicine, maybe. And, and sometimes. Like the scotch. Sometimes, I'm not going to say who, but sometimes the nasty boys would be there. And Vince's drink would get halcyons or something dropped in it. And that particular night, somebody had dropped some pills in his drink. And actually, it happened twice. Uh, the, uh, the China Club in New York was the one that ended it all. It was, it was bad. <laughs> but this time, it wasn't as bad. Uh, I think the China Club was because it happened to him the second time. He said, no more partying with the boys. But he got so lit that he was letting guys do their finish on him. Like, uh, who, who did the sharpshooter? Brett, Brett did the sharpshooter on him one time. Uh, Bro Warrior Hawk, that's who I was sitting there was with Hawk. And Animal wasn't there, but Hawk was, had he somebody. He did the clothesline off the stage, Yeah, right? yeah he yeah, got yeah. a clothesline dance, and he almost didn't <laughs> flip all the way on the dance floor. It's out on the dance floor, the whole place is going crazy. Yeah, popping. Yeah. And meanwhile, Kurt was like, keep him here. You know, Kurt here, Mr. Perfect, keep him here for a little bit. And, and the, you know, like, me? <laughs> Why? Just keep him here. Like, oh, all right. <laughs> Whatever that, you know, is going to entail, what I got to do. Um, but it was okay because Vince didn't try to leave. He, you know, he stayed and he partied with us. But evidently, when he got back to his room, I, I guess Kurt had the room right next to him. <laughs> so he knew exactly where Vince was. And he had to, from what I understand, I wasn't there to see it. He had to step over, like the back, the balcony. You know, it's like a little. It was like outward thing, and and reach over to the other balcony and go in that way and go in the sliding glass doors uh -huh. to go in Vince's room. Vince came back that that night and somebody had shit in his bag and oh. cut his shit up. <laughs> they had all this stuff. <laughs> they even shit in Vince's bag. Oh, huh? they, uh, nobody. nobody was, I've <laughs> never heard that before. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, San Antonio. Wow, what a what a next morning it must have been for Vince to open up his bag. Well, he got he got he got upset because he couldn't understand because they had you know door was locked. <laughs> Kurt he couldn't went, understand how someone got in. <laughs> yeah, to my Kurt Hennig thought he clothes. was Liam Neeson and taken <laughs> jumping from balcony to balcony yeah. to shit. In you Vince's know we used to do that. I didn't because I'm you know I'm not scared of heights, but I'm just scared of my luck. I that wouldn't do that. That guy look, but yeah. Sean did it in Salt Lake City, Utah. He was doing that. And we were up he on the seventh from floor, not jumping, no, cr you know, cl climbing over. And, and you're hanging on a damn Whose little metal thing. was he trying thing. to get into? No, he was just doing it to show he could do it. He wasn't trying to get into He was nowhere. going into strangers' hotel balconies? No, he wasn't going in. Yeah, <laughs> whoever was next to us. He was just drunk and, oh. and cutting up. Having fun. Yeah, and, and I was just laughing at it. All right. But now when I look back, like, holy shit, what if it would have come out? We're going seven floor up, man. What happened at the China Club in New York? Uh, nasty. Now, I don't. I won't say nasty boys, but somebody got him. Would uh, it was ecstasy. Remember, yes. <laughs> remember the ecstasy. Stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of a love drug. <laughs> oh dear Lord! I can only imagine what direction. And they got Pat in. Patterson too. And, and I think Pat was the one. Now I wasn't there for that. I was there for the PT club, but this the China club. I love that place, man. I'm so sad it's gone. There was some. I almost got m killed there once. Oh, oh really? But uh, you know, I met all this. You know, a lot. They had a VIP room mm -hmm. in Monday nights, and that's when we did uh, Madison MSG, Square Garden. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the celebrities, local, you know, whoever was in town, VIP club was where to go because it was other VIPs, you know, celebrities. It, it is just hard to be out in the crowd, you know. Yeah, when, it makes you, sense. You know, because you everybody's, you know, you're like this, like yeah, can I get my drink and you know stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, you ain't got to worry with that when it's all the celebrity types. So that's where I met Janet Jackson, who was my dad. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. Mariah Carey, who I think threw up on herself that night. Oh, jeez. TLC, one of them died, uh, Lisa. Uh, but it was, Did you uh, have any <laughs> relations Sein, with Seinfeld the... Seinfeld was Did you like, have any relations at the China Club? Huh? Did you have any relations at the China Club? Like, what do you mean? Well, physicality. I ain't going to get into that, though. <laughs> Janet Jackson, did you have a little Rhythm Nation or what? Well, I was disappointed more times than I was happy. <laughs> Just say it that way. Leave it at that. But um, 
All right, we, we, we can leave it at that. But yeah, so what but, happened? So when so Vince the, and Pat got the ecstasy, yeah, and, what, and, and, and what ecstasy happened? For, for y'all that have not done it, <laughs> it's probably 99% <laughs> of y'all. Ecstasy, the younger, you know, I'm I'm an old guy now. I'm like 117, you know. Well, you know our combined age now. We, we mentioned that before. 100 and something. Actually, now 101 because your, your birthday's passed. Oh, yeah, it's 102. Cause you're 41. So happy birthday, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Belated birthday. Cut my a hair weeks ago. All right. Where's Free haircut. Phone? We'll get Hollywood Barani down here to do it. <laughs> but so uh, Vince and uh, Pat, it's it's sort of like the oh, and, and it brought the age up because the younger generations, when they do, well now they got uh, they got different name Molly and all the different names for it, uh, but it was basically mescaline or. or MDMA. That was the good shit. <laughs> that was when it was good. You know, and then they started making it in bathtubs with all the bullshit. And you didn't know what you're getting. You might spend a hundred dollars for five of them. And ain't none of them more it's like you take all five and the music and the lights are bright and sounds good, but you know, it wasn't what them uh, the mescaline would do. So how did Vince yeah, and Patterson... would, Wait while I'm getting oh, to I'm it. sorry. <laughs> and and you you could tell when you walked in the ecstasy bar. Because everybody's like this, oh, how are you doing? And, and the younger ones, they love the damn the raves, you know, with the glow lights and the music. Yeah, the music. Yeah. Um, but when the real shit, now nah, you're rubbing on everybody. Oh, you feel so good. Let me rub your face. It's almost like what uh, happened with Cecil the Lion and a former ring announcer outside. That, I don't know nothing about that. Yeah. So if that's yeah. bad, Those I wasn't there. Before you had times. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but so, Pat or Vince, well, I think it was Vince started rubbing <laughs> on somebody, and Pat was like, "Let's get out of here." <laughs> we, but Pat, somebody has got our Pat drink. Pat had the ecstasy too, you said. But yeah, he took it too. Who was but he, he saw rubbing? Vince like starting to do the, the. Oh hey, who was he rubbing? How you doing? Sean? Who was he rubbing? Oh, I don't know. No. I, I, I wasn't there for that one. I was at the one in PTs. I just heard about it, Vince. Was rubbing on somebody. I mean, it could have been Tatanka. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but, but, and and Pat was like, "Come on, we got to go." They got our drink. They gimmicked this. This car, you know, gimmick. The gimmick. This. <laughs> so he got. So he was, he was a little friendly with Sean and Tatanka. Well, maybe Tatanka. I don't know about Sean. I oh. think everybody in the world thinks that. I don't know. I've never yeah. sit there and videoed it. Yeah. You know, I've never watched. But, um, well, I I, I think. I think they're just close. I don't know how very, close. Very close. Yeah. Very close. I don't know if they enter each other, if that's what you're getting at, but, but um, I know they're pretty close. Very close. Boy toy. All right. Well, he lived the gimmick. But, but that was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> that was it. Vince stopped going out with the boys because, you know, After I guess they figured out they both. And I guess they got back to the room and they were like, yeah, they what, got us. I wonder what happened. Two oh. beers didn't do that. I wonder what happened when they got back to the room. <laughs> uh, the reason they were good friends for them, that was second highest to that trouble. Remember when they got in well, trouble with the Well, you want to hear thing. a story? Shit. Should what? we say this story? No, so, yeah, you you say it. If what? it's that bad, you say it. You know what? I'll see if you've ever heard of this one. And this, this was from one of our Tony episodes. But, dot, 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 yeah. I believe the match was... God, who, I don't remember the match, but it was a house show in that's the... Too much. You got to... A little much, yeah. And no, it, that's not much, but straight across. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It, in, it, it was Patterson, maybe against Pedro Morales. Oh, this is way back. Yeah. And the referee, whoever the referee was, he was in charge of giving the finishes that night. Tony was booked on the show, and he overheard it. And um, <laughs> for some reason, they, they were confused about something, and they needed to reach out to Vince. So the referee said, okay, he gave me his number to reach him in case of an to reach Vince in case of an emergency. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the number happened to be Patterson's home. And Patterson snapped. He said, fuck, he's with Louie again. Yeah, Vince? Yeah. About, about Vince? He, Vince was the number to Louis, reach. Louie was his. Yes. Vince was at Patterson's home with Louie while oh, Patterson damn. was working the house show. So they had a trio going on. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah, I called. I called. Um, you know, Pat and Louie were. Everybody knows. Oh yeah, yeah. They were in they a relationship were forever, a long yeah. time. They were almost faithful to each other. But, almost, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, they. I called from. 
uh, Europe. I think I've told this on a previous episode. Y'all got to start watching, man, because some stories. Catch up in the archives yeah, if you've missed any. Yeah, so some stories come out that shouldn't be coming out. But that happens a lot. That's why there's a lot of extra kids in the world. But anyway, um, talking about things coming out that shouldn't. It wasn't meant to be. But um, um, by the way, are you for or against abortion? Against. You're against abortion? Oh, good for you. That's Unless it's a situation where a right, woman is violated, yes. attacked, right. molested. Or it's going to kill If the, the child is going to be disabled or challenged or something like that, then I think it's justifiable. But if it's just a slip and you say, oh, okay. See, to me, Responsibility. And hopefully I don't get, this doesn't come out too wrong and the, the females that watch turn heel on me. But I don't <laughs> think it's, a, it's an issue of women's right. I think it's an issue of human rights. You know what moral, I mean? Moral, moral, yeah. I'm Catholic, so I mean, it just it kind of is what it is. It's a personal opinion to those that are for it. I, 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 re, I respect your opinion. And you know, I always think I don't know what the hell that has to do with it, Patterson it, it, and Louie. Pretty much nothing, oh, but right. we'll, get, we'll get back to them. All right. But you know, when I was 16 years old, um, my girl at the time, she was like, I think she was a year younger than me. Um, her name was Jill Kirby, but don't, I don't want to say that on TV. No, we won't. Um, but she, <laughs> but she, <laughs> um, we, we thought she was pregnant once. And I'm 16, and you know I'm just getting. That's tough. Yeah, and I'm thinking this is going to change everything. And you know I, I never really ever like used condoms because yeah, it don't feel the same. It don't, it just don't feel the same. Man. <laughs> um, but um. And a little extra and money. I, and you know. I always figure, you know, I didn't find out until later in life that there's seepage, you know, and that little bit of seepage. Because when you blast the whole thing, it's a whole bunch of stuff. You don't think that even seepage, like a little drop, yep, there's a thousand sperm. Why are we talking? That's why Annie always felt safe. She never she had to put, worry but, about it. But she, but she put that cellophane over The saran wrap. Yeah. Saran, is that what it's called? And then when she would, uh, into somebody's butthole, she didn't have to taste the shit because she had, man, this is getting X-rated and ugly. So back to what I was saying, I, I always, we thought, me and her, you know, I think she was a year younger and I was 16, so she was real young. Um, and that, that can't be statutory rape if you're, <laughs> you're underage too, can If it? you're both underage, I don't think so, no. Yeah. But so um, we thought, I don't know why we thought, I think she was starting to pooch or something and she didn't have a period. And I guess when girls miss a month or something, I don't know how it works. I've never been a girl yet, but um, it, it, we thought, what if, what if you are? What do we do? What do we do? We started considering abortion. Yeah, you know, we it's actually a tough considered decision. It. I mean, you're looking at two teenage kids. That's tough. Yeah, and you know, we, we've but got to me, I would life. say, you know what? And, adoption. And, and but, you know, to me, if you if you want to have a kid, and then one day you come up pregnant, yeah, hey. But if you're just fucking, if you're just having sex. You know, to enjoy sex, because it's kind of good, according to your partner. You know, sometimes, I, I think I've had bad sex maybe twice. No, oh, all right. I mean, because you can take any lame-ass starfish. You know what the starfish fuck is when they just lay there like a starfish? <laughs> you got the five points. Um, starfish, you, you, it's up to you as a guy. You got to yank them legs around. You got, man, this has turned into an X-rated show. But so I, I'm, I'm always, I remember how I felt at 16 thinking abortion because the kid was not intent, intended. So it's like, don't bring a kid in the world. We didn't go, I'm 16, she's 15. I'm working at a bowling alley, she's not working at all. How are we gonna feed it? You know, of course the parents will probably take care or they might say, get the hell out of here. Mine wouldn't, because you know, they were different than most people. But you know, hers, you know, they were up, up there. You know, they, uh, what do you call it? Financially, they were, they were up there. Upper class? Yes. And so they probably would have, but that wasn't that wasn't what we wanted. We wanted our life, you know. You, you once you have a when kid, you from what I understand, youth, th that changes your life. Yeah, it really does. Well, Sean told me that he goes when you, when you care about something more than you care about. It might have been Al Snow. I think Al said that because I asked Al. Al was the most faithful guy on the road. He was another one. That really? Never, yes. And um, you know, he saw me always with all these different girls every night, and he would go out and he would you know cut up and, and mingle and stuff. Yeah. And, and the girls liked that. I mean, they were always, he would always have a pretty girl talking to him at his table. But he'd always, we, we roomed together, so he'd always come back by himself, you know. And I asked him one time, we made a road trip. I was like, how can you 
not messing with these beautiful girls. And because he had always said to me, one day when you're ready, you'll settle down. And, and I said, but with you, but how do you stay faithful? You see none of the other guys are. How do you stay faithful like this? And he goes, when you care more about your, somebody else than you care about yourself, it changes you. And You want to hear a story? Yeah, I'm about to, ain't I? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. It was a TNA girl. This was Cauliflower Alley Club over 10 TNA, years ago okay. now. The, the night, not the night TNA club. Impact. Oh, okay. And um, you ain't gonna tell me followed who, me back. Let you tell me who later? Because I yeah. know a bunch of them. <laughs> because it was, it, we, it was, we spent the night at the Cauliflower Alley Club. There's a TGI Fridays. And they kind of have an area set aside in the casino for, for the wrestling people when they're in town. Right, right. They can have a little privacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and superstar Billy Graham was there trying to hustle them for the week. And <laughs> what do you mean by that, though? He's always hustling. You know <laughs> him. I, mean, I love Billy. He should have died about 15 times. But he's, I don't know <laughs> he cheated how many, life or I don't he know how many liver transplants he's had. <laughs> but whatever. He had the, a few of Billy and, I mean, actually, I had a little heat. still have a little heat with Billy. Well, but you that's got a some more now. Story for a different time. <laughs> but no, Billy, no, no, no. Well, Billy, yeah, Billy was trying to. Uh, By the time I'm done here, I won't need a haircut. Right. Billy was. Very flirtatious with, I don't know if... You're talking it, about superstar. Yeah, I don't know if it was transgender or not, but uh -oh. they wound up being, it, later in the, the year, they wound up being stranded in Boston because of Billy, and not, <laughs> not expecting it, they had to stay, Cold as hell she had to winter. stay at John Cena Senior's house. Oh, for real? Because there was nowhere else for her to go. But that, that's for the story for the book. But anyway, so this, and I'm talking... I don't think I am much of a, uh, a, a, a magnet playboy. for women. Exactly. I'm not much of a playboy. But you know what? At the end of the night, we were all... If you would get that... So you got another one shooting a transfer leg. No, it's something down here. It looks like a big-ass transfer crawled oh, up here. Here we made go. Here we go. All right. Oh, you got it. Make, all right. Thank you. I don't know thank if y'all can see that, but... Thank you. Thank yes, you. they have one with, uh, hanging out his nose about this long. So anyway, no, we all left as a group probably 10, 12 of us, all going up the elevator. Yeah. So it was it, it, by the... The time we were getting towards the top, it was just me and this woman. And we were talking, 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 blah, 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 Annie. blah, blah. Oh, please. No, this, I'm, I'm talking. This was quality. Oh, okay. So she's holding the door open, talking to the elevator, blah, blah, blah. So it was nice to talk to you. You know, good night. Then she walks out, and the elevator door closes. So I'm like, hmm. So I, you know, I so we still keep talking, and I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what just happened? <laughs> what the hell just so happened? So we're going down the hall. Con continuing to go towards my room, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so I knew well, where this was that? going. <laughs> I knew where this was going. And I got two doors away, and I said, you know what? This could have been the adventure of a lifetime. <laughs> but at that point, back in Boston was the lovely, blue-eyed, blonde-haired Linda Marotti. Oh, okay. And two doors away, I said, it was really nice to talk to you. Maybe we can have you up for a show sometime. I got to pack and get ready for oh, my you, you, Oh, you put that security blanket, like, maybe later. Insurance plan, as I call and, it. But, and you know what, though? You want to know why I know I made the right decision? <laughs> That's the insurance Because thing. about a half an hour later. Cause this oh, was, you made the right decision. It was without. probably 5, 5.30 in Vegas. So it was, you know, morning back here. Right. Linda and the kids called. Oh, While really? they were having breakfast. So imagine how bad I would have felt. She didn't normally do that? Huh? She didn't normally call you like early like that? You're Linda, talking about Linda. Well, it was just the time difference because right, I was right, getting ready yeah. to go oh, to okay. bed so and they, was she was getting ready, you know, they were yeah, having yeah, breakfast yeah. at school, yeah, yeah. get the kid ready for school. And how bad would I have felt as a person? If, if you were laying there. If I was banging some wrestling woman. While, I'm going to make you feel better. While, go her ahead. And, while her and the kids were calling me on the phone to say good night. You I'm know gonna, what I mean? I'm going to make you feel better about Thank that. Thank you. What do we got? It's more than one time I've been in the room when, with, with a tag team partner mm -hmm. or even a friend sometimes because it's happened more than once. Um, a lot of the guys have to call home that night and say good night, you know, after the show. I guess, you know, that's what married people do. I, I, you know, I ain't never been married. I was once for four days. <laughs> but I got it annulled though. Good. But so I've never been married. But um, the married people, I guess you you call even boyfriend and girlfriend. I used to call Ray Lim once in a while. Like if we had ten, I was trying to save money back then. 
to party with. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to get high, not talk on yeah. the phone, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but you know, I'd call her and check in. How, yeah. Are you safe? Are you safe? Yeah, everything's good. But married people or closer people would, uh, every night, you're supposed to call home. Yeah. And uh, some of the guys would sometimes, we were rooming together. And I'm thinking of one time in, in, in particular, but I don't want to say who it was. It was a tag team partner. I'll yeah. just give you all that. All right. Um, I can almost go as far as saying the f first name because I had a couple of them. Yeah. So it was a Sean, but I'm not saying Sean. it was Sean. Right. Um, wait a minute. One was single. I can't tell the story now. You can figure it out. <laughs> it, it might have been somebody else, like the barbarian yeah, story. It yeah. might have been it somebody else. It could have been else. someone else. Um, but the, Potentially. Called home and, and just say goodnight while they're pumping, while they're on top pumping away. Hey, honey, I love you. I'm, going, I'm sleepy. I'm going to bed. While now, the rat me being was single, in the room. I can't, you know, relate to that because cause I'm thinking that's dirty as shit. You called your wife while you're fucking another girl and tell her you love he her? He was actually in her? On top, pumping away, bro. I mean, she would ask, what's that I hear dueling bed, bed, bed springs in the background? What's that about? You know, she had been, he had had to come up with an answer. But, now, uh, I have to ask you this. Was he drunk or high also, or? No. That's that's pushing the limits a little bit to call while the rat is actually in the room. I don't Not think the rat the usually find at arenas. That's why they call them the arena rats. Yeah, this was found at a strip club. Oh, okay. So this was <laughs> a more quality piece. Well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wasn't those garbage rats? You know, they were. Some, wasn't those garbage arena rats? This was a quality one. Some of them rats spiffied up when they come down to. Oh, they sure would. Yeah. The, the, just the. Aroma of the perfume. Uh, oh my God! Topeka, Topeka Patty was the worst. Um, you know, she was a sweetheart girl. Yeah, uh, she was a Bozak though. When Sean, like, no, I probably still, I forgot. I was gonna say this is before he's married, but he's got family now, so you, you don't want to do that. Well, that's all right. Everybody had a life before they were married. Right, but I don't want to tell it because of wife and kids now. So I, I was just just finish up on what we was at. There was more than once. I actually seen girls call their while they're getting hammered, call home and say, I'll be home in a little while. Yeah, I got stuck in traffic, you know, yada, yada, yada. Yeah. And, I, and I love you. That's what got me the most. They're getting fucked and they're saying to the person at home, I love you. <laughs> what the fuck? Judy Martin. <laughs> Who? Judy Martin. What'd she do? No, was, she, was that who you're talking about? No. No, all right. All right. No, it was a dancer. It was a dancer? <laughs> yeah. Exotic. A WWF dancer? What are you talking about? You, you lost me there. You, oh, you're talking about women that were with the wrestlers would yeah. call their home. To yeah. talk, I see what the you're saying. The women would okay. call sometimes, too. I mean, not only did the guys do that. So when this former tag team partner of yours was laying it in. I feel so much better about myself that at least I'm not that bad. So that's why I was telling you so you don't feel bad about thinking about it that night. Temptation. I'll tell you this. To be, I'll be very honest. It was very tempted. But you know what? It's almost like what Al said to you. I cared much more about her. Right. I cared much more about those kids in that family structure than I did getting off. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, because the next morning, like some couple times in Africa, they didn't tell me ahead of time they wanted money to, to come. The women? Yeah. So the next day when I'm leaving, oh, uh, they wanted like, to pay them. Yeah, I'm like, well, you didn't tell me that. I thought we hooked up. <laughs> 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 oh, you have to pay. And I'm like, you had that different money, like African money. Um, it would be a 500 on it. It's only like a few dollars, you know, American. But they wanted it. Yeah. But, but no, I handed her a 500 because I, I wouldn't. I was, you thought it was a lot. I, I yeah. got to hurry up and catch the bus. What was funny about this one I'm thinking about yeah, right. was that uh, the bus is out there waiting. They're blowing the horn. And the guys are coming knocking on the door. And I open the door. They see the girl over there. Um, and they're laughing. They run back out. He's, he's getting dressed. And uh, well, I gave her the 500. I forgot what the money's called in Africa. Y'all, y'all probably know. Uh, but anyway, didn't but, amount to much. But I didn't know. I was hung over. I thought five, 500 should be good. <laughs> and she goes, "That's all you think I was worth?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You take it. We'll give it back then. You don't want it." And I left. And then Jake's coming out, and I'm sweating. I'm hurrying. And he's laughing. He's like, what, "What's going on, brother?" I'm like, "Look in the door." And he went in there. And Jake didn't make the bus. <laughs> oh, no. Jake went in and violated the woman? 
with Damien or was with his own snake? I don't know. I don't think he had Damien with him. I didn't see the bag. I don't remember. So but James yeah, went and finished. Yeah, he, he had to come way later. He didn't make the bus. He got the sloppy seconds. <laughs> well, that's all but right. he didn't even bother him. He didn't care. No, that's all right. <laughs> that's all, well, when you have no taste and no class, I guess I'm I got class. You do. Oh, yes. That's, in high that's well. That's what Annie used to say. Remember? I got class. I got my class, baby. I'm not like those other whores. Can we take a flow, Max? Uh, Can we, well, you know what? We're just getting ready to wrap up. So, wrestling fans, this was a, so a very, hair. very short episode about wrestling about 1989. No, it's probably the right. Thing. We <laughs> talked about marriage. We talked about life on the road. Next week, we're going to talk WrestleMania Five, a big one hey, from Atlantic hair. City, New we'll Jersey. He's going to take the flow, Max break for all our friends. Here in the chat, thank you for joining us. Remember, the Super Chat is open. Send us a tip of any size. We appreciate it. And go to it Paramount. It keeps the light on. He's, he says it wrong again. What is pa it? Patreon.com Patreon. backslash Boston Wrestling for the price of a Starbucks coffee. Get early <laughs> ad-free access to all of these great talk shows, plus our studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep the wrestling legends working on ebay all of this great merchandise is for sale just about everything except for me and marty so check it out and some great things are happening our talk talk show series continue each and every week and for marty Janetti, i'm dan marotti until we speak again we ask you to be well stay healthy and join us next week good night good night yeah yeah the World Wrestling Federation was live at the Rosemont Horizon in Chicago, Illinois, Friday, February the 18th, 1994. In the opening contest, Owen Hart beat Jim Powers. WWF Tag Team Champions, the Quebecers, retained the titles over the Smoking Guns. WWF Women's Champion, Alandra Blaze, retained the title over Heidi Lee Morgan. Brett Hitman Hart, victorious over IRS. WWF World Champion, Yokozuna, retained the title over Tatanka. Jeff Jarrett defeated Bob Backlund. Macho Man Randy Savage and Lex Luger with the win over Crush and Quang. And WWF Intercontinental Champion Razor Ramon retained the title over Shawn Michaels. If you're in Chicago Live, share your memories in the comment section below. Use the links in the description box to keep wrestling legends working in our eBay store and on our acclaimed Patreon streaming service so we can bring you more interactive superstar shoot interviews to relive the good old days of professional wrestling. Check it out. Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year with professional wrestling content galore and need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after our Monday Night Raw review, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with WWE Hall of Famer Mr. USA Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights at 10 p.m. after NXT and AEW, join rotating legends on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday night after SmackDown, don't miss John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, history videos, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. For less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, get early ad-free access to our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times. Join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021.